Hi everyone, hope you're well. Today's a bit different in the sense I'm not covering a retro gaming handheld, but a retro gaming plug-in console. This is the new Hanover Game Box, which was interesting to me as it's a very low profile setup box. So it's supposed to emulate everything up to and including PSP and Dreamcast, while being completely pre-configured out of the box and packaged with two wireless controllers, also being able to dual boot into Android TV. It definitely had enough features to catch my eye, and with it being available under promotional offer for under $50 at the moment, convinced me around to trying it out. So other than the game box itself, inside the box you get the wireless gaming controllers, a TV remote for use within the Android TV operating system, the power brick and HDMI cable included. The wireless controllers are obviously built around the DualShock 2 uh, from PS2, but we will have a look closer at them later on. So my first impressions was that the game box is certainly a low profile system, but being super light and portable. On the front we've got two USB ports, where one will likely be used for the wireless adapter, but if you want to use your own control controllers of the like, you're able to do so. The rest of the shell is actually pretty bare, with nothing on the underside except ventilation holes and the model number, nothing on uh, either side and the game box logo and the tiger sticker on top. On the back is where we've got all of our I.O. except for the two USB ports. So we've got an Evernet LAN uh, port, full-size HDMI port, AV port, the micro SD card slot and DC jack. The micro SD card slot is spring activated so you have to be a little careful not to accidentally ping the micro SD card into space when you inject it. But it does make it super easy to back up, add or remove games as required by plugging it into your PC and accessing the box or accessing the box wirelessly. Though the game box only supports 2.5 GHz Wi-Fi, so it isn't great when it comes to remote file transfer and isn't something that's worth considering any form of a remote play on. So jumping over to the included accessories, the game box comes with a dual uh, or two DualShock 2 style wireless controllers, as well as an Android TV box remote control. The remote control works as you'd expect and actually uh, becomes the easiest way to power the box, as I couldn't find a power button anywhere on the game box shell itself. Moving on to the included controllers though, they're a bit of a mixed bag. Anyone who's previously used a third party DualShock 2 control before will probably know exactly what to expect, but in summary the ergonomics are good, but there's a number of little snags or issues that bring the overall feeling of the controls down. Firstly, the shoulder buttons seem a tiny bit too small for the casing. You can see gaps around the edges of them and their travel range is hampered because of it. The edges occasionally get caught and they just don't feel like they've got enough travel to the full press of them. The select and start buttons are a bit too long and wobbly and don't quite look right due to the length of their buttons and their power on switch at the bottom has a bit of a jagged edge to it. The controllers are powered by two AAA batteries which aren't included but do last a long time so they seem to be pretty energy efficient. The joysticks support L3 and R3 presses are actually in my opinion the highlight of the controllers with good travel in all directions, good response and spring back very efficiently. The D-pad is less impressive, with the D-pad directions again feeling a tiny bit too small than they should be and suffering because of it. Pulling off combination movement is more difficult than it should be on this type of D-pad, and they're just not nearly as responsive as I like them to be. The passable, but far from ideal. The front-facing buttons are good in isolation, with a good feel to each press and a good response throughout, but combination button presses just don't translate well at all. If you're holding down a button and then press another button, there's a bizarre half second delay introduced for the second button press, which makes running and jumping in a platformer or firing items in a cart race that just need to see annoying when playing a game. To be fair, I had this all set up during a family party over the weekend and the kids absolutely loved it and their gameplay wasn't hampered by it at all. But playing these games so regularly personally, it certainly became an annoyance to me to the point I'd likely use another controller with it for any serious gaming sessions. The firmware of the game box is quite interesting and appealing too, with it dual booting both a variation of Emulec and Android TV. It will always default into Emulec from turning it on, which has been set up pretty well to be fair in terms of out of the box setup. The controls are all mapped consistently well throughout, and there's the level of customization which I haven't normally seen, like filters preset up in RetroArch against some of the systems. There's an input code you need to enter to get to the more advanced settings, which stops kids or the non-technical from accidentally breaking the system, which I thought was quite neat, but then the default theme features some artwork that's not exactly kid-friendly, so I personally wish they'd just gone with a more console icon-like theme straight out of the box. Booting into Android TV is very easy to do, but the controllers don't work here at all, so you're limited to the TV remote for control. It's very neat as a feature, but you'll be using this for some TV apps available. I'd recommend using the Evernote port, as otherwise you'll be limited to the inbuilt 2.4 GHz wireless banding. 
Anyway, I'll cut to some gameplay now and some ways back up at the end. Thank <laughs> you. 
Get ready. So all in all, I was actually pretty impressed with the game box, certainly more than I thought I would be. It offers a lot in a slimmed down package and the current promotional price of around $50 feels like a fair price to me considering what's included. 
The controllers are just about passable, but the fact the game box makes it an easy process for you to use your own elevates this negative point for me somewhat. Please do let me know what you think though, as I featured this on the channel purely because of my want to get one. So if you'd like to see some similar content in the future, please do let me know. Otherwise, that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching.